Hello, beloveds. I'm on here again to share a word that I just went over, one of an older word, and it's called Time Awaits No Man. And it was given to me November 5th, 2003, 1222 in the morning. It starts out with Isaiah 40, verses 21 to 23. And this is New King James. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing. He makes the judges of the earth useless. I need to remember that now, huh? Do not the seasons change without you changing them? <laughs> that reminds me of, uh, what's that song? Oh, gosh. My Fair Lady. There's a song in My Fair Lady where, where Audrey Hepburn is singing to this guy who's been kind of wooing her. And the Lord continues. Okay. Seasons change without you changing them. Do not the stars shine without your prayers? Do not the planets encircle the sun without you being able to do anything? So why does man think that I need anything to do what I want to do? I will perform my word whether man is ready or not. Many do not realize that in their pride they are taking credit for what only I can do. They say it's because we fasted or it's because I've done this or that as if I, the creator of heaven and earth, didn't inspire them to do it in the first place, okay? So they're taking credit for something that God has done in them. Hallelujah. He said, I am God, there is no other. I will not share my glory with any man. That is why what I do, no man will be able to take credit for. Get this. It is just because I love you. I love mankind. I do not give out gifts because you have been approved or taken a test. I hand them out because of my inimitable love for you and promises in the word to use you, you frail and weak men of the earth. I do it because I am in love with you and I want to encourage your hearts as you go through the walk of faith and maturity. So don't look upon the ones who carry my glory as if they were something more special than any other man. They too <laughs> are just men. This is nothing but idolatry to man. I choose. I don't choose because they've reached a certain level of perfection, although some teach that, of which I only know what it takes to do that in a man. I choose out of my love for you and mankind. I am a God who shows no partiality. Did you hear me? I do not show partiality. And I would have you to sh have you to show no partiality also. Okay. And do not look at how beautiful a person is. Do not look at the gifts. Do not look at their clothes or belongings. I give and I take away. All these things can change in a moment of time. Remember Job. Do not show partiality to the rich, I have said in my word. Ho, oh, yet the church goes on judging each other. So what I am about to do will be a great equalizer. And you will know that I have loved the outcast, the homeless, the poverty-stricken, the drug addict, and the alcoholic, the homosexual, and the rapist. I am telling you that no man is beyond my grace. Okay? My grace is a gift and is not to be taken for granted. At least those who have nothing have nothing to lose. They do not bite and devour half as much as my church devours each other. The men I chose were not educated men. Most of them did not attend rabbinical school. Most of them were plain and uneducated, but the education they got was at my feet and, and is all they needed to be used. No more will the church walk in exclusivity without 
consequence. Whew. Ho, oh, I am here in your midst. I have seen the heartache and rejection perpetrated by those who have grown insensitive to the needs of my people. I have seen the lack of prayer, the lack of integrity, the lack of adhering to love, and the hypocrisy in many smells in my nostrils. There are many sincere and honest men who are trying to do all things by listening to my voice, but all too many are walking in insecurity, fear of loss, fear of not having enough, and control, witchcraft, selfishness, and perversion. Yikes. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord, I said. So now it begins. Whoa! For I will sweep clean my church as I run the wine press of my love. For I am, let's see, determined in my heart to have a spotless bride and I will pour out my glory. But understand that my glory reveals all that's hidden. Isaiah 40 verse 5 says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh will see it together. Hallelujah. Ho, ho, ho. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Hallelujah. I am coming to set you free. I am coming to set a table before you in the midst of your enemies. I am coming to restore what has been stolen from my people. I will return the hearts of the children to the Father. I will restore all that the locusts have eaten. Stand still, O church, and see the salvation of your Lord, for I am coming in clouds of glory, and I am shooting my arrows at the wicked. I am righting all the wrongs. I am kinsman redeemer, and I am coming with hosts of angels, <whistles> and I will perfect that which has been laid aside, and I will restore true shepherds to my flocks. Hallelujah. I'm keeping this one short because I got a longer one to do. <laughs> okay. And um, get excited for, for um, encounters that are coming, okay? God bless you guys.